Around 250 million people have played the wildly popular online game Fortnite in the year and a half since its debut. It is described as a cross between Minecraft and Hunger Games. Players battle with guns and other weapons on a fantasy island or work together in creative mode. They also build things as well, which is the Minecraft part. 61% of U.S. teenagers have played Fortnite, according to a 2018 survey by Common Sense Media. It also found almost one in four parents are worried about the amount of time kids spend on the game. Dr. Sue Varma is a board-certified psychiatrist and assistant professor at the NYU Langone Medical Center. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So it's not just Fortnite. There are all of these kinds of games that kids get intensely interested in. What is happening in their brains when they get this kind of, uh, well, addiction? There is such a flood of dopamine that's resulting. We're finding that just anticipation alone of the video games can increase your dopamine by 70% in the brain, which is the pleasure and reward system. But the problem is that these young kids, their developing brain has the foot on the gas, but it doesn't have a foot on the brake. So we don't have the same control and regulation. The kids don't know when to stop. So how is it, yeah, affecting their development? Yes. So we're finding that kids often, like there's a, a craving set up where when you interrupt the kids, they get extremely irritable. And we do know that there have been some cases of violence where kids are breaking into their parents' car to try to get their devices. They're stealing credit cards. Now, that's not the norm. That's not the baseline. Most kids are able to regulate their playing, but we are finding that kids that are more vulnerable, who might be prone to depression or anxiety or have difficulty making friends, might be using this as a form of coping or avoidance. So it's the exact executive function ability Absolutely. that allows them to stop these kinds of things. But yes. when does that kick in? When is it proper to sort of let them figure out how to develop their exactly. own executive functioning? Look, it really depends on the child, right? You have to know the child, do they have the ability to be able to say no? And really what it comes down to is, do they have a more compelling activity, right? Because a lot of times kids are going to say, why do I have to stop? What's more interesting than this? I don't find homework interesting. Yeah. But I think you have to give them what we call a healthy diet of other pleasurable activities. Nothing can replace the human connection. If your kids really enjoy spending time with you, with friends, reward that as a behavior. Say, can we go to your favorite movie? Can we go to a play? Can we go outdoor hiking? Can we go rock climbing? But isn't that part of the problem here? Because I know certainly from personal experience in our own house, and this isn't a problem actually, which is to say that the team play and the group play and the yes. connectivity to friends yes, is intense and pleasurable in a way that we would all recognize from our own growing up. Absolutely. But we do need to give them op op opportunities and alternatives and to give them choices and really the brain the executive function is developing up until the age of 25 you're gonna have a lot of really mature 13 year olds and really you have to take it case by case basis do you have kids in your house I do do they play Fortnite? and they do play Fortnite, and it's really difficult because I, I was wondering how hard it is on parents absolutely it's very hard because look when you set limits and those limits are broken there's a breach of trust in the house it says I thought that we were on the same page mm -hmm. but I'm finding that giving the kids a part a hand in the accountability and saying listen it's up to you right you can choose this or you can choose that, but you can't have both. So we use something different in our house. We actually used, and this was my husband who figured this out because he's really good at this stuff, but, um, <laughs> something called Circle, which is on your phone, and it shuts off essentially the game after 45 minutes. So there's a there's a list, there's a set of expectations. It's taken a while. Yes. I'm Sometimes it's been unplugged mysteriously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but it now they have know that it's there's a device that sets the time limit. It's not a decision that either I make that I have to be mean about saying get off of it yes. or that they make that's yes. the limit yes. and it's done yes. and I think that helps all of us absolutely and you're giving the kids natural consequences right and you don't have to be the bad guy in this so saying I didn't do it or setting a timer right and letting them know that you, you have a 20 minute warning before this stops so I think giving them rules regulations expectations boundaries reinforcements or and as a psychiatrist um, do you, are you seeing things in kids that concerns you about these games? I, I am. Like, there is a level of the competition, right, the violence that sometimes... It, this, we're not saying that this is what is going to lead to stuff outside, but it, it is wiring the brain to sort of set people up against each other and a survival mode mechanism. But that's what I keep hearing the, the, yeah, there's the, a lot of, the thing raised about the violence. How yes. worried should we be about yes. that and yeah. what should we do about that? Yeah. So if the kid... Look, the problem is, does your child know the difference between reality and fantasy? Are they able to draw the line to talk know. about 
child. Yes, and a parent really should be on the lookout for dangerous behaviors. Is your kid starting to socially withdraw? Is there other grades going down? Um, are they uh, not connecting to people? Is their personal hygiene going down? Are they preoccupied with thoughts of death? That's a big one. Do they talk about suicide? So many parents are afraid to ask the difficult questions because they think that they're going to plant seeds into the minds of their children. And let me tell you this, those thoughts, if they exist, have been there for years. So know, your, know the warning signs. This does not happen outside of context. If we are talking about dangerous behaviors in real life, there are things that already pre-existed mental health issues, and this might be exacerbated. What is it. a difficult question to ask, Sue? What is that? You know, I've, how, do you feel like your life is not worth living? Do you, do you cry all the time? Do you not get meaning or purpose or pleasure? Do you not feel that people like you? Um, some kids will tell you, I feel rotten to the core. I feel unlovable. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I don't have mm -hmm. friends in school. I sit by myself and, and have lunch. Uh, I get bullied. Like, a lot of times parents want to turn, turn the other way because they don't want to deal with issues. They don't want to deal with issues in themselves. They might be marital problems. Video games cause a lot of conflict in couples because there's a difference in parents. And do you think sometimes kids use these games as a substitute for all the things that they're lacking? Absolutely. Or are worried about? Yes. And, you know, a lot of times games do give kids who have problems making friends. It gives them an opportunity because it gives them a common ground for something to play with. So I do think that in some contexts, kids that might have challenges, it might be a way. But never use this as a substitute for the real-life connections. Even social media can have a compulsive use. You know, we call this sort of like a problematic interactive social media use. Mm -hmm. Sue Varma, you're terrific. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Doctor, a lot of good you. information. Really good information. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank you. We thank you need so to much. keep your number. I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> thank and you, And she Dr. can be reached Sue. at one yes, day. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sue Varma. Thank good you. to have you here.